Hello. In the last episode, we started to create a table family parametrically. We learned about length, width, height, thickness parameters, and how to add material parameter to our tabletop. We are going to continue with that example and add legs to our tabletop. Using this example of adding legs to our table, we are going to learn how to create formulas in a parameter and connect two parameters with each other. So let's begin. So this is where we left off in the last episode. We had created a tabletop, added length, width, height parameters. We also added thickness and tabletop material parameters. If you haven't checked this video out, I really recommend that you do because we are going to start off this video from this point onwards. In our table design, we want to create table legs that are tapering from bottom to top. We have a bigger circle at the bottom and a smaller circle at the top. So it's basically an extrusion between two separate profiles. How do we do this? We would do it using blend tool. With this blend tool, we can create an extrusion between the two profiles that we need. But because we want this table to be parametric, there are a few additional steps that we want to do before we start creating a leg using the blend tool. What I really like to do here is to create a leg at 100 millimeters away from the both corner points. How do we do this? Whenever the length changes, I want my leg to move in a way that this distance remains always 100 millimeters. In order to do this, let's create a reference plane and mark the area where we want to position our leg. I'm going to create the dimension between these two reference planes. And I'm going to make sure that it is only the value that I need. Both of these values needs to be 100 millimeters in this particular case. So creating these two dimensions is not enough. We also need to lock it because our intention is to always keep this dimension 100 millimeters. So whenever you want a particular dimension to remain consistently the same value, you can choose to lock them. Let's try to do that on the, all the four sides and mark all the four legs position. So I'm going to create 100 millimeters here, 100 millimeters here. So, and I'm going to use this value and lock it. I'm going to do the same on the other side. I'm going to make it 100 millimeters here. And I'm going to lock the dimension. Now let's see if our intention works or not. So I'm going to change the length to 1500 you will see that this reference plane also moved with the value and this co distance consistently remained 100 millimeters. Let's try to do the same with the width. Let's check this out and make it 800 millimeters. How this reference plane moved so that this distance always remains 100 millimeter consistently. Let's undo this. Now we are ready to start with creating our legs. Let's go to create and blend option. The first step is to create the bottom profile. The bottom profile should sit at the very bottom of the reference level. So I'm going to set my work plane to the reference level. I'm going to create a circle of about 60 millimeters, let's say. Once I've done this, I'm going to edit the top and create another circle at about 30 millimeters. Now I'm going to finish it. Let's go in the elevation to check. What about the height of this particular leg? One way is that we can select this blend, take this little arrow and drag all the way up to this reference plane and lock it with it. But by doing this, whenever we are going to copy this leg, this alignment lock is not going to get copied. So individually, we will have to align each of these blades. Can there be a better way to do this? Of course. Let's control Z and undo it. Instead of dragging this blend all the way up, I'm going to go into the properties of this blend. The first end, which is this bottom profile, is at zero from the work plane, which is completely fine. The second end, however, should actually touch all the way where the height parameters stands, somewhere here. So how do I connect the height to this height parameter? I'm going to select this blend, go to the second end, an associate family parameter and I'm going to associate the total height of my extrusion to the height of my table. This way 
the height property is ingrained into the properties of this plane. So whenever I'm going to copy this particular leg, so this constraint is also going to get copied. Let's go ahead and check whether the height parameter actually is connected to our blend height. I'm going to change the height to 1200, let's say. And you see how my leg also got extended. I'm going to put it back to 1000. Now let's go back here. Another thing we want to do before we start copying the leg on all the other corners is to create this leg parametric so that we can control the radius of our legs from the parameters. So what I need to do for this is to go in back into the edit base. I need a radius dimension. I can go here and create a radial dimension. Select that and create a label. Let's give it a name, leg bottom radius, BR. Next, I'm going to edit the top and do the same with the top radius. An alternative way of creating a radius dimension is to select this. You will see a temporary radial dimension. You can convert this into a permanent one by selecting this little icon here. You can select this dimension, change it into a label, leg TR, top radius. And I'm going to finish my sketch. This means that if I go back to my family types, I have two parameters with which I can control my radius. Let's say I want to make this about 80 and 40. You see, from by changing the information, I'm changing also my model. One more thing I want to do here is to connect these two parameters with a formula. Every time I change a bottom radius, I want my top radius to automatically update so that it always remains half of my bottom radius. How do we do this? We have a formula section here where we can add formula. Let's go ahead and add a formula for our top radius. Instead of typing the name of the parameter, I generally like to copy it so that there are no spelling or caps lock mistakes. And then I'm going to divide this by half. So whenever I change my bottom radius, let's say I want to change it to 80, you will see that it automatically updated to 40. If I change it to 65, it's automatically updated to 32.5. Let's go ahead and use our copy tool. I'm going to choose multiple option and going to use the exact intersection point of these two reference planes and copy it exactly at the another intersection of these two planes. Whenever you are copying in a parametric environment, it's really important to choose the right base point and right destination point when you're using the copy tool. So let's copy exactly at the intersections of these four reference planes. So whenever you're using copy, mirror, or array tools, do not rely on Revit's intelligence. Always check your parameters, whether they're flexing correctly or not. So let's go ahead and check whether this is going to work as we intend to. Now let's check this width parameter, try to make it 800 and you will see that how all these four legs are positioned correctly. Let's also check in the elevation. What if I change my height parameter to 1200? Are all of my legs moving correctly? Now let's go ahead and add a material parameter to it. So I'm going to select all of my four legs and choose our associate family parameter option to add a material. If the legs in the tabletop have the same material, you can choose this existing parameter or let's try create another parameter for my legs here. So now you have two material parameters which you can change. Let's go ahead and add a material here. I don't have wood here, so I'm going to duplicate and make a wood material for our legs. I'm going to replace the asset with an existing wooden material. Let's make it birch. As I've checked use render appearance, it has altered, its, the material has updated its shade. Let's go ahead, okay, okay. Beautiful legs. Let's go ahead and also add material for the tabletop. I'm going to duplicate my material and call it um, tabletop wood. Use render appearance and replace the render material to another wood from the library. Maybe this time cherry wood. 
So it has a little different shape, so we can recognize two different materials. There we go. In the next episode, we are still going to continue this table design and learn about some tips and tricks of creating parametric families. So please make sure that you subscribe. Stay tuned. I'll see you in the next one.